we're talking Modern Warfare Zombie Season 2 leaks. It's fair to say that Season 1 Reloaded was an extremely disappointing update. But within that update, data miners have managed to find strings of code that relate to content coming in Season 2, which is only two and a bit weeks away. So we really don't have that long to wait. As we get into things, I'd love to know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe for everything zombie so you don't miss a thing. But according to Hey, I'm Alex over on Twitter, he has discovered strings for the Season 2 story mission that we'll be getting as part of the update. Unfortunately, just like with Season 1, it sounds like we're only getting one new act mission. That's what it looks like, at least from Hey, I'm Alex's tweets. These are all worded as being a quest and involving a rift, just like what we saw with Season 1. First part of this new mission is called Rescue Fletcher, with the description to go to Fletcher's last known location, which is labeled as a stronghold. Now, Fletcher refers to Zakaev's right-hand man, who also is leading the Terminus Outcomes PMC group. So it seems rather than us going after Zakaev again, we're going to be going for Fletcher first. Next objective is to investigate the nearby distress signal. And once we've done that, the next objective is to defend the remaining survivors survivors until the ACV is ready for reboot progress percentage during the mission but remaining survivors it sounds wherever we're going to it's somewhere pretty dangerous but the next objective is where things get really interesting because it says to regroup at the ACV with the remaining terminus agents meaning that some of these terminus agents are going against Zakaev's back here and want to betray Fletcher somehow as they're now working for us but this is all involving an ACV that needs to be escorted and then after that, it says to escort Terminus to Fletcher's last known location with a vehicle health percentage. And then we get to the final two parts of the mission, which sound extremely interesting because there is an abbreviation for an enemy that we fight, which is labeled as an EMP enemy, something that we have not seen before in modern warfare zombies. So the first part is to investigate the source of the signal disruption, and then we need to eliminate the source of the signal disruption, all whilst protecting the AC. CV's health. So this sounds like this could be a brand new boss fight against a new zombie type, which is an EMP enemy. The last time we saw any type of EMP zombie inside of COD Zombies was back in Exo Zombies. So I really hope we don't see that return in any way, shape or form. But I'm hoping that this is going to be a massive enemy, which has EMP like abilities, which I think would be really interesting to see how that affects general zombies gameplay. We saw an ACV escort mission for the Act 2 story mission, but there was nothing threatening the ACV from its movement or its health necessarily, but this could be the shakeup that we've all been wanting to see with regards to a new enemy type in Zombies. And then at the end of this, we're obviously going to get a new storyline cinematic cutscene to continue on the story. Beyond the story mission, there is a chance of a new item Easter egg quest, just like what we saw with Season 1 and the four items needed to open the Dark Aether Rift. As according to at Cod Warfare Forum on Twitter, they've posted a tweet containing strings of items items relating to Fletcher that we the player can physically collect and also upgrade in the exact same wording as what we had with the items in season one that we had to upgrade to then place down on the plinth at the Dark Aether Rift. So it sounds like we'll be collecting items from his past to open a new Aether Rift portal. If that's going to take us to a new playable area, then that is extremely exciting. Now this tweet shows what the four items are as well as an actual in-game description of what they will read as when you hover over them in your backpack. So there is a drum, there are tattered MMA gloves that will spark with electricity, and the description from says the gloves seem to be embroidered with a message, a place to exhaust the body but charge the spirit. Pristine mirror, where an eerily pristine mirror with an engraving on the back, with the sentence, reflections are hidden in depths, written backwards, and a perforated target with the description of a target filled with various bullet holes with an insignia of a snake. To me, this actually sounds pretty hype and it shows that there is going to be some sort of hidden quest with season two which i think is something that we are all wanting and that sounds really cool and of course we'll be solving whatever this is on the channel when it releases but as for new schematics it's been leaked that the vr11 is going to be a schematic so we'll be able to build and craft our own vr11s and for a while the blood burner bike has also been a rumored season two schematic and according to at alan the third 90 on twitter discovered that the blood burner schematic will craft you a vehicle 
magical key, which you'll then use to summon the motorbike. Now, I have no idea if what I'm about to talk about is going to be coming in season two, but I would imagine that Treyarch would want to add some new contract missions around the map. And according to Alan the Third, he has managed to find some brand new ones in the code, such as Hunt the Merc's Cargo Chopper, which sounds like it could be similar to Outbreak, where there was a chopper flying. And if you destroyed it, you'd be able to get some loot from the remains of the helicopter. A new contract called Summon, where you charge ether amplifiers and it will pull an elite bounty out of the dark ether and you have to kill it before it retreats back. An objective centered around defending a turret where you'll find one nearby and you'll have to protect it from taking damage until it's rebooted. And whilst it's going for a reboot stage, the frequency of the turret will attract undead until it is finished. And some sort of new objective called hostages involving mercenary AI and then friendly AI who are scientists. And the objective will be to rescue the scientists from the mercenaries. By the sounds of it, there will be completion for if you saved all the scientists or if you saved some of them. And finally, an objective called survive, which is essentially the same thing as the holdout objective from Outbreak, where you have to survive in an enclosed area for a certain amount of time where you are not allowed to escape. And again, this could all be stuff that is coming later down the line beyond season two. This might not even be what's coming for season two. But if these new objectives were introduced, then it's a really good excuse for Treyarch to also implement brand new missions within Act 4 tied to them. Because if you think about it, Act 1 to 3 was basically a tutorial where you were using all the different elements of the game. And that included completing every single contract that was available on the map at some point. One of the more interesting discoveries that this Twitter account made is that they found strings towards conversations that were referencing a ton of warlords. Now, these warlords are not only going to be in zombies, but they're also going to be part of Warzone for the new Covert X fill and the weapon case quest, where I assume each game there will be a different warlord. Putting my tinfoil hat on, if all these warlords are going to exist in Warzone, then eventually they're all going to also be featured in zombies. Because if they're already existing and completed, then there's no reason why they wouldn't be used. Some of the names here are ones we've heard before, such as Legacy and Dockerby, but there are a lot of names we've never heard before, which means that these could all be future warlords added into zombies. And the warlords here are Kerry's, Garrid, Archangel, Rainmaker, Bronco, Kolenk, Ursa, and Sokolev. That is eight new warlords that we don't have yet. And whilst I like the idea of warlords, I just would really love a warlord to come into zombies that is actually a zombie. I'm just really bored of the idea of fighting human AIs inside of the mode. I'd love to just fight something that isn't human. But with such an exhaustive list there, it sounds like there could be a new warlord or maybe even two within each season, which I'm sure some of you will be happy with and some that just won't like the sound of that. But as far as new weapons that are coming for season two that we can use in zombies it's been leaked by at vondi is pog on twitter that the fn f2000 ar is going to be coming known as the anvil b a battle rifle which is the beretta arx 200 known as the hrm 762 a new smg called the pm9 as well as the mtar which i'm really excited about but also there is going to be a sword melee weapon added el Baberto tweeted on the 4th of january that not only will a sword be coming to modern warfare 3 but a bow is going to be added to the game as well likely in season two and the idea of using a bow in modern warfare 3 zombies sounds really exciting there's no way there'll be anything like derizon jack bows but i'm still really intrigued to see what they do for these weapons in zombies one of the other bigger things coming to season two which seems all but confirmed because actual menu images showing this feature have leaked as well and this is the x fill streak system which has been leaked for a while now this looks to be a 100 guaranteed thing coming in season two because of the fact it's finished and there's menu images for it. Last year, DMZ got the x streak reward system where every time you x successfully, you would add to the streak and you'll be getting new benefits when you spawn it into a game. And Zombies is getting the same thing, but this time it's called a containment level. By completing a contract in a game, it will raise your containment level for your operator and you can complete as many contracts as you want within a game to count as one new level for your operator, but you then need to x successfully for that to count. And by increasing 
increasing your containment level by continuously completing contracts and exfil, you will start each deployment with bonuses that will give you an extra advantage on the battlefield. Big shout out to Jackson Keck W on Twitter and Detonated for putting his image together, where you can see all of the rewards and what containment level you need to be at in order to get them. So the first is to start with 500 points and you just need a containment level two. Then at a level five, you'll get five armor plates upon spawn. At eight, you'll start with a thousand points. At 12, you'll get 30% off perk machine costs. At 15, you'll start with 1500 essence. At 30, you'll have an increased contract payout. 40 will start you with 2500 points. 50 will give you 50% off the mystery box cost. 70 will start you with 5000 points. And 100 will get you 20% off the pack a punch cost. But apparently in game, it still says $20 off the pack a punch cost. Yo, that would be a terrible reward. That should incentivize players to complete more contracts more often in a game and also play longer to try and build that streak up. And your problem is once you've gained this massive level and you don't exhale properly in a game, like you might crash or something, you might lose it. So I hope Trioch has tested this enough and also put some fundamentals in place in case that happens. There's also some other features that have been leaked in the game code, but don't seem to be coming for season two, such as a wallet system, which might come in season two reloaded or maybe even season three. That's all we know so far about season two unofficially. And I'm sure in the coming days, we'll start to learn more about what's coming for season two. And I'll be covering that all here on the channel in the official capacity from what Treyarch and Activision have actually told us. There's a good chance most of what we've spoken about is going to come for season two, but you never know with game development.